but uh, I guess if there's a cancer to get, this is probably one of the better ones for sure, because at this point I have not had to go through treatments. And so, uh, and I, it's, it's amazing. I went to, and I, thank goodness with some good mentors, I had memorized all kinds of, of scriptures. And a lot of them was, God says, do not fear. Mm -hmm. You know, be strong and courageous. Uh, uh, be anxious about nothing. And I said, okay, Lord, you know, this is the way we've lived since we've become Christians. And so I'm just going to trust you. Why would I you. change now? Well, yeah. why change? That's why I said to Eleanor. I mean, she's taken a lot tougher than I have. I mean, you're going to die someday. And I always thought that I'd probably die of a heart attack. And, and probably I will. But, you know, I could easily die of a heart attack before I die of cancer. But I think that God says, take today. Give it the best shot you can. And if you wake up tomorrow, give it another shot tomorrow. So we have decided we're not going to worry uh, about uh, tomorrow. But uh, we certainly have learned that we're going to smell the roses. We're not going to miss a day. And I've learned to... Uh, and the other interesting part about it is I thought I was taking good care of myself. Well, we found a guy this really... The last two months, I want a pretty strict diet on that. It's amazing how much... Uh, better you feel when you really get intense. You I'm actually thinking. feel healthier here feel, today than when you were here. When were you here last? Oh, what month was that? A couple of months ago, I think. Yeah. It was, yeah. But oh. you, the point is, you, you're feeling better. Well, I, I went, I'm a serious diet. I take all sugar out of my, uh, out of my diet. I have had no sugar in uh, two months. And I'll tell you, for a dessert guy, that is difficult. But and I've, a great I, baker right oh, beside man, this, you. I know this. I, I would put this woman against anybody in the world in the kitchen. And so, but I can't have any bread, so there's no, no wheat, so I can't any bread. And uh, it, it's amazing. I've lost 10 pounds, but I've never been stronger in terms of working out. Like I can never, I can do 55 push-ups now where I could, when I started, I can only do about 35. And so it's amazing how, uh, but the, you know, I'm wise enough that I'm, you know, I'm certainly not out of the woods. I've got cancer, I'm full of cancer, and at some point there'll be a day of reckoning, but... You're strengthening your ability to do this that's journey. That's exact. I'm doing everything I yeah. can. I think that God says your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm a lot more uh, cognizant of what I put into my body. And, uh, and we were on, I would say on the average, we would probably be in the top percentiles of how we ate. But definitely far it. too much sugar. It sounds as if you're de-yeasting your system. Yes. Nothing that contains yeast or feeds yeast. Exactly. Sugar feeds yeast is exactly. like Pac-Man. And sugar feeds cancer. Ah. I, have, I had read that years ago about that there was a connection. They felt there was a connection there. And so I think the, the two together are deadly as far as the internal organs. So it, is he cutting back, Eleanor? Yes, he has. He has the Yes, the last two months he's been much, much better. It's yes. not that I didn't expect a straight answer from him, but I just... <laughs> well, he, he used to always keep saying, no, well, yes, we'll cut back. Next year I'm going to cut back. Well, then finally it is hit that he's had to cut back right now to give his body a chance. I mean, because you need your rest. Fatigue is a killer. Also, whether you're healthy or unhealthy and the travel and, of, uh, and, and the speaking. Speaking takes a lot out of you. I mean, draining, especially doing the marriage conferences when you're on for the whole weekend. And plus, mm -hmm. not that we're counselors, but a lot of people want to talk and yeah. help have get some yeah. insight into their problems or what they're doing wrong. Or sometimes maybe you don't want to hear what you're going to tell them. But I mean, all that is draining on the Very body. Draining. Very draining. Yes. Well, it's finally, it's really good to discover that you're really not as important as you used to think you were. You know? God can get a lot done without me and you don't have to do everything. And so I say no more now than I ever did, mainly because I include her in the decisions that I make now. Before, I'm just so spontaneous, and, 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 and but I've got no desire to retire. Like, I, I mean, I'll, as long as I can go to work, uh, I'm going to go to work. But mm -hmm. I mean, Eleanor has talked some common sense into me. and. You know, you get to be 67, you need to be uh, slowing down a bit. So anyway. Eric Erickson, you remember studying him in school on the stages of human development. And the crisis of midlife is generativity versus stagnation. Uh, teaching yourself out of a job, cloning yourself, mm -hmm. building into others. You were doing that, both of you, before you hit midlife. I mean, you just started immediately. As soon as you got grounded mm -hmm. in Christ, you just shared the best you knew everywhere you could. But you know, there's some watching, I know this, uh, whether they know the Lord or not, who are looking at your calm, your acceptance of the situation, uh, 
just how positive you are and they can't get a grip on that and uh, it could be cancer it might be another overwhelming crisis can you give a little counsel in these last couple of minutes on how to get it down to that peace that passes understanding how to begin to be able to receive it well, Eleanor and I talked about this after we got it, and we had some conversation, obviously, and I would tell you this, if it was her in, in this, if she had cancer, I wouldn't be doing near as well as I am. I know that. Uh, but it is me, and uh, uh, I know I'm going to die someday. I mean, that's just reality. And I, I'm, I've had 67 years, and I can't think of anybody more fortunate than myself. So I just give thanks today for what I have. And if tomorrow comes along, I'll handle that too. But like we have no, I have no fear of dying because I've got reservations. I know where I'm going. You know, God makes that promises. And then he's given us all these promises. And I had to decide that, are you going to trust God or not? And he said, the steadfast of mind, I will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in me. And so as soon as I start to get anxious or anything, I know I'm trusting in myself or trusting a doctor or something else. And I say, wait a minute, Lord, this is not. And the wonderful 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm -hmm. And he goes on. And so Lord, uh, you know, and uh, maybe because I'm, you know, I've had several concussions over the years and no sense, <laughs> no feeling. And so I, but the, the bottom line is I've decided to trust God. And, and, and he never promises the rose free, you know, the wrinkle free life. John 16, one of the first verses I get our men to memorize. In this world, you will have trouble. But he says, take cheer because I have overcome the world. In other words, put your hand in my hand and we'll get through this. And when I look back over the history of devout, more, much more godly uh, people than I have gone through a lot tougher times, but they've trusted God. And so I've always said, I want to finish well. And so I get up every morning. Okay, Lord, there's another day. You know how weak I am, uh, but I know that you're strong. And so my strength is going to be your strength. And so that's what I encourage people. But obviously, you've got to do things that you enjoy life. Like I think God wants us to enjoy today. And so walk the color, walk, go out for a walk, enjoy the, the beautiful uh, uh, birds, cardinals. We said there was a cardinal in our backyard this morning. I mean, man, this is so beautiful, you know, and, and all the flowers are out right now on the trees. And so take today, enjoy what you can. And if sh tomorrow shows up, then take a shot at that too. We've been so blessed to have this time with you and we're gonna track with you. We're gonna pray for you. That would be good. <laughs> In Psalm 138 verse 3, David said, when I pray, you answer me and encourage me by giving me the strength I need. Paul and Eleanor, I hope that you will just experience God's hug through this journey and his surprises. Uh, uh, how many push-ups already are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even say. <laughs> oh my goodness. You're an encouragement to us. Thank you. Maybe you need to pray today and you may not be familiar with that. You, you may not be comfortable with that. We would love to pray with you. The prayer line is right at the bottom of your screen. You can call that anytime.